In this video, we will discuss the pathology of follicular adenoma and follicular carcinoma. Firstly, we will discuss follicular adenoma. So let's start. First of all, follicular adenoma is a benign neoplasm of thyroid. You know all adenomas are benign. Secondly, the question that comes into mind is that whether follicular adenoma is a risk factor for follicular carcinoma or not. The answer is that generally follicular adenomas are not forerunner of follicular carcinoma, which means most of the follicular adenomas will not transform into follicular carcinoma. However, there is only a small subset of follicular adenomas that can transform into follicular carcinomas. However, generally follicular adenomas do not progress into follicular carcinoma. So this was the important point which you needed to learn. Now the second important question that is commonly asked about follicular adenoma is that whether it is toxic nodule or a non-toxic nodule. In the dictionary of thyroid gland, a toxic nodule is that nodule which produces a lot of thyroxine hormone. So it is considered toxic and a non-toxic nodule is that which does not produce thyroxine hormone. Therefore it is considered non-toxic. And as far as follicular adenomas are concerned, they are generally non-toxic, which means that they do not produce thyroxine hormone. So follicular adenomas are non-toxic nodules. Now let's come to the pathogenesis of follicular adenoma. As far as the pathogenesis is concerned, follicular adenoma can occur by one of these two pathways. Firstly, in cases of non-toxic adenomas, the mutations occur in the RAS, PI3K, AKT signaling pathway. This is one of the signaling pathway that signals the cell to pro proliferate. So this is a pathway that can be altered in follicular adenoma, RAS, PI3K or AKT. Secondly, in cases of toxic adenomas, the mutations lie at the level of TSHR, thyroid stimulating hormone receptor, which is present on thyroid follicular cells. When this receptor is over activated due to mutation, then the thyroid stimulating hormone has excessive effects on follicles which results in increase in size of follicles and it can also cause increase in quantity of thyroxine production by the follicles. So toxic adenomas have mutations in thyroid stimulating hormone receptor. Now let's come to the clinical features of follicular adenoma. Most of the follicular adenomas present as painless nodules which means that there are nodules on thyroid gland that does not cause pain. Now there is another important diagnostic point that in order to differentiate between toxic nodule and non-toxic nodule, we perform radioactive thyroid scan. In thyroid scan, the thyroid nodules can be present either as cold nodules or hot nodules. But what do we mean by cold nodules and hot nodules? Actually in this test, firstly we inject the patient with radioactive iodine and then we perform radioactive thyroid scan. Now if a nodule is composed of cells that do not make thyroid hormone, then it will not absorb iodine and will not be prominent on radioactive picture. Such nodules are called cold nodules. But if a nodule is composed of cells that make a lot of thyroid hormone, then the cells will absorb a lot of radioactive iodine. Consequently, on radiographs, they will be very prominent. Such nodules are called hot nodules. And as far as the follicular adenomas are concerned, most of the nodules are cold nodules and only few of the nodules are hot nodules. So most of the follicular adenomas are cold nodules. And the significance of classifying into cold nodules and hot nodules is that that cold nodules have a small 10% risk of malignancy while in hot nodules there is no risk of malignancy or cancer. So if there is a cold nodule it needs to be removed from the body because it can become cancerous. So these were few clinical important points about follicular adenoma. Now let's come to the morphology of follicular adenomas. On gross model, follicular adenoma appears as a solitary or a single lien. Secondly, as thyroid adenoma is a benign tumor, so it has a well-defined capsule. For microscopic features, you know that thyroid adenoma is a benign growth of thyroid. So the keywords to focus are also the same, benign growth of thyroid. The word benign implies that the tumor does not show capsular or vascular invasion. And the word growth of thyroid implies that there will be increased number of closely packed follicles. Also note that occasionally, the thyroid adenoma can also have intensely eosinophilic hurdle cells that we studied in Hashimoto's thyroiditis. Now another important point that is not only about follicular adenoma of thyroid but also applies to all other endocrine adenomas is the presence of endocrine atypia. Atypia simply means the presence of atypical cells which in non-endocrine organs can be a sign of malignancy but in endocrine adenomas, atypia is considered a feature of benign type. 
also in follicular adenoma even if there are some atypical cells we will not label it as follicular carcinoma now we will discuss the pathology of follicular carcinoma and the first important point to know is that follicular carcinoma is three times more common in women as compared to men secondly a risk factor for follicular carcinoma is dietary iodine deficiency you know that dietary iodine deficiency is a risk factor for goiter and it is also a small risk factor for follicular carcinoma now let's come to the clinical features of follicular carcinomas like all other thyroid neoplasms follicular carcinoma is painless and non functioning but a unique feature of follicular carcinoma is that unlike papillary carcinoma it does not show nodal metastasis or lymph nodal metastasis rather it causes hematogenous metastasis or hematogenous spread into liver lungs and bone so the point of difference is that papillary carcinoma does not show hematogenous invasion and shows lymph nodal metastasis in contrast follicular follicular carcinoma does not show nodal metastasis and instead shows hematogenous metastasis into lungs livers and bones therefore follicular carcinoma has a much worse prognosis than papillary carcinoma because it is causing invasion or metastasis into other organs now as far as the pathogenesis of follicular carcinoma is concerned it is caused by mutations in ras pi3k akt signaling pathway you know that this is one of the signaling pathways that signals the cells to divide but in cases of follicular carcinoma mutations can lie in any of these proteins if due to mutation any of these protein ras or pi3k is over activated which is called gain of function mutation then it will result in follicular carcinoma and if there is a loss of function or negative mutation in p10 which is a negative regulator of this pathway then loss of function mutation in this regulatory protein will again result in overactivation of this ras pi3k akt signaling pathway so follicular carcinoma can be caused by gain of function mutations in ras or pi3k or it can be caused by loss of function mutations in p10 which is a negative regulator of this pathway now it is worth mentioning that mutations in these proteins ras pi3k and akt signaling pathway can lead to both follicular carcinoma as well as non functioning follicular adenoma so this pathway can be involved in both follicular carcinoma and follicular adenoma so the difference between follicular adenoma and follicular carcinoma might be in some other proteins but as far as these proteins are concerned they can be mutated in follicular adenoma and follicular carcinoma as well now we will discuss the morphological features of follicular carcinoma the keywords to remember are follicular carcinoma The follicular implies follicular morphology but the follicles will be small in size and increased in quantity because it is increased growth. The carcinoma we all know tells us that there is invasion. It might be vascular invasion, capsular invasion or invasion to adjacent tissues. Now associated with differentiation between follicular adenoma and follicular carcinoma on microscope there is an important point. We have seen that main difference between follicular adenoma and follicular carcinoma morphology lies in the invasion of capsule and so to practically differentiate between them you need to see thyroid capsule interface. Now if you are doing FNAC which is fine needle aspiration cytology you will only see cells in microscope and will not see the capsule hence you cannot tell whether it is an adenoma or carcinoma because to differentiate between an adenoma and carcinoma you need to see invasion of capsule. So this makes the differentiation between follicular adenoma and follicular carcinoma very difficult on cytological examinations. As a result, you can only differentiate between follicular adenoma and follicular carcinoma when the nodule has been excised out of the body. Only then you can see the thyroid capsule interface on microscope and can tell whether it is follicular adenoma or follicular carcinoma. Therefore if a patient comes to you with a nodule in thyroid and you cannot tell whether it is follicular adenoma or follicular carcinoma the treatment of choice is the removal or surgical excision of the nodule the surgical excision is necessary because it can be follicular carcinoma as well not just follicular adenoma this concludes our discussion on follicular adenoma and follicular carcinoma